Welcome to another GIMP tutorial. In this video, we'll be learning about the Rotate tool and also the Scale tool, which will let us scale and rotate our image or just a certain selected part of our image as well. So to get started, I'm going to hit Control Z. We'll undo all these changes. Go ahead and locate these tools. If you hover over, it tells you about them. The Rotate tool, Shift R, is a shortcut to access it and the scale tool is right next to it, it's shift S. Again, your icons may look a little bit different than mine, but don't worry about that. When we click on the tool, we get more options for it down below. Sometimes, for whatever reason, you may be on a different transform mode. You might be transforming your selection. In this case, you might get an error message, or if you have something selected, say we were using the selection tool to select a certain area, we could rotate just the selection. But you probably don't want to do that right off. If we do this and hit rotate, it's just going to rotate our selection and not our image. So make sure on the mode you're on the transform layer, not selection or path. I'm going to go to right click and just go to select all. So we're selecting our entire image. And then with the rotation tool selected and in the transform mode under layer, we can just left click and hold and move around like from right to left or up and down to rotate this image. When we think we have it where we want, we can click rotate and it will rotate it to that position. Notice we've kind of cut off. We haven't really cut off these areas. They're still there, but they are outside of our project or outside of the size of our image. So we would need to either resize our image to get those or scale down our selection. So that brings us into the next tool. If we wanted to keep these areas and maybe put a color in over top of this transparency, we can left click and select the scale tool and it behaves very similarly. We can just left click and hold and scale down and scale the size of our selected area, which in this case was the whole image. The scale tool also has this little box in the center. If we left click and hold that, it also has a move function. So we could move this and keep scaling it down by just left clicking and holding anywhere. Or we can also scale by dragging these little boxes on the corners. We can even scale, looks like it's gonna scale uniformly, but there's some options we could change. If we wanted to squish this down, we could come over here under the options and check this box here that says keep aspect ratio, or rather uncheck it. And if we do that, then it'll allow us to squish this down and kind of make it not, uh, not scale it uniformly, if that makes sense. So pay attention to the options we have over here. Um, and that's gonna help you out a lot with these tools. Let's jump over to a different one. I'm gonna hit Control Z and undo everything we did to this. Let's go to an image here. Actually, let's do this one real quick. So in this image, it has the horizon is sort of off. It's not level. And if we wanted to level out that horizon, what we can do is just click on the rotate tool and then left click and hold on this image. And we could try and eyeball it and get it to where we want. And then we can hit, hit the rotate button or hit the enter key on the keyboard to actually rotate that and set those changes. But if I do control Z, there's another way we can do this, which is to create a guide. We can hover over up here in this, where it says how uh, the size of our image, this kind of ruler area, we can left click and hold down the left mouse button and then just move to the, the position we want. And maybe we'll set it right there and unclick. Now that creates this blue dotted line that we can use as a guide to rotate to. We could also do the same thing if we wanted to from the left. We can drag another guide and we can drag as many as we want. We're gonna cover guides later, but to get rid of guides, we click on the move tool, make sure we're, we have selected pick a layer or guide, and then you can just drag it back off the screen and it goes away. So let's go back to the rotate tool. And now if we left click and hold, we can rotate this and try to match it up with that line. And that looks pretty good there. So we can hit the enter key. And now we've rotated this image and it looks much better. Although we do have sort of a black uh, area here. Let me get rid of this guide. So see now we have some black corners where we rotated. So we could crop in. We've learned how to do that using the crop tool. We can left click and kind of create a cropped area and sort of crop this in nice how we want it to and then hit enter. And now we've got a nice cropped image with a level horizon. So that's one method to do that. I'll show you another method as well. If you have an old image like this, this is an old World War II image from somewhere in Europe. But if we go to, to uh, if we grab the selection tool, uh, let's grab the crop tool actually. If we go to, we wanna crop this out, but we don't wanna lose any of the, uh, of the pixels in the image. Well, we would have sort of a line. We have a white line at the top, a white line at the bottom. So if we wanted to rotate this before cropping, 
We could just do that with a guide. We could drag down a guide and then rotate to it. Um, and maybe I'll keep that guide there. Let me hit escape to get out of the crop tool. Um, one other thing we can do in the rotate though is we can automatically crop as we rotate or, or as we apply a rotate. And to do that, under the tools, there's this clipping. And right now it's set to adjust, but if we click on that, we can go crop to result. And so if we set that to crop to result, now when we rotate this, we can rotate it around to get it sort of where we want, about level with that. Now we hit rotate and it automatically crops the image. And in this case, it's it cropped it out uh, with those white pixels around. So I guess it doesn't really help us much in this case, but we can come back over and then grab the crop tool and get pretty close in there without losing uh, detail of the image and hit our enter key. And now we've got a nice cropped image without losing those some of that corner cutting out some of this corner detail and let's touch on the resize tool a little bit or on the scale tool so scale will let us scale whatever is selected we turned off that uniform scale so that's why it's allowing us to squish and sort of change this around again that's the keep aspect ratio is that box that'll make it so we can scale uniformly also the shift key if we hold down the shift key on the keyboard it allows us to get into that sort of mode where it's not keeping the aspect ratio um, it also behaves the same where it has a preview. If we don't have the preview selected, it'll just show this box and we can scale this box, but we don't actually resize the image until we click scale and then it will just resize. And again, notice what it's doing. If I uh, zoom out here, notice what it's really doing is scaling the image down and then keeping the size of our original image there. I'll get rid of this guide again. And so we'd need to crop into this. Another way to do resize, if you just want to resize an image, oops, is that you can come up here. This is the one I use a lot. I just go to uh, image and then go to scale image. And that gives us some more options for scaling it. If you know a certain size you want it, like 1920 wide, and this one would be like 1375 if we keep the aspect ratio. And you can even adjust the resolution to maybe something more like 96 DPI. Or you can have it be, if you wanted to print it, you can do 300 or 600 DPI. We'll touch more on DPI in the future. So don't worry about if that's throwing you off or you don't understand it. But here, I'm basically upscaling this image. I click scale and it creates a larger image without cutting off the sides. I could also go to image, scale image and make it incredibly tiny, make it maybe 64 by 64. We'll distort it a little bit and hit scale then it shrinks it down, but it doesn't get that transparency around the outside of our image. Uh, well, hopefully you found that informative. Oh, I wanna show you one more thing. If we wanna grab this, we can go to select all. I can do control C on my keyboard to copy this selected image. And I could go paste this. If I wanted to put it like a watermark on this image, I can go control V and it may be larger than I want. So what I can do is scale this down and Looks like since this image is already grade scaled, uh, it's going to put, it's not going to show color just the way that this image is. So let's put on this one instead. Control V. We have this nice image here, or this nice uh, yeah image that we pasted on here, and we can use the scale tool to change the size of this. I need to turn that back on. We can change the size of this here, and we can also rotate it uh, around as a separate layer like we've learned in the in past videos. Well, hopefully that sheds some light on the rotate and the scale tools. Uh, go ahead and leave your questions and comments below if you have any, and I look forward to catching you in the next video.